So, welcome back to the Future of Transportation, the podcast where we explore how technology, policy, and innovation are reshaping how we move through the world. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome Kiana Park, MIT alumna and pr president of SpyPom Partners, a management consulting firm serving transportation and infrastructure management organizations. Over her career, she's worked on Boston's Big Dig, led national research at Transportation Research Board, and built a consulting firm that helps transportation agencies think more strategically about their systems. She's also given back in incredible ways through her service to MIT as a corporation member and alumni association president. Today, we'll talk about her personal journey, her views on innovation and transportation, her experience as a woman in STEM, and her leadership in public service. So welcome to the podcast, Yana. Hi, Sophia. Well, <laughs> happy to be here. Well, thank you for joining. So we can start at the beginning. What first drew you into the world of transportation? Was there a moment either at MIT or earlier in life when you realized this was the field you wanted to dedicate yourself to? Yeah, so when I was 12 years old, I decided I wanted to become an urban planner. And I, I landed on urban planning because I love that it combined design, engineering, policy, economics, and other aspects of the way we live. And, and I would say in my studies and in my first job, I was focused much more on the building side, but um, from that focus on large scale urban infrastructure, it led me to transportation. Um, so, so I would say that it started with the interest in urban planning where transportation is clearly a part of that. But then um, I ended up shifting from the building's focus to transportation, partly because transportation has um, the federal gas tax, which um, allows for national research in transportation that the building sector does not have, which drew me to that. Was there a reason you were so drawn to urban planning at 12 years old or how did that happen? Yeah, you know, my, my um, dad, I think, thought that I probably, I had said I wanted to be an engineer just because I was good at math. And he, he was getting his PhD at Berkeley and knew a lot of the, the engineering PhD students were um, a bit introverted. And I I've always been extroverted. And he had a friend who was getting his um, PhD in urban planning. So, so he had his friend take me out for lunch one day and tell me about urban planning. And, and I said, wow, this is really cool. So. Well, you earned both your undergraduate and master's degrees in urban studies and planning at MIT. How did your time there shape how you see transportation, cities, and the role of infrastructure? And were there particular mentors, classes, or projects that really stayed with you? Yeah, so so I remember just um, being excited the, for the first time academically at MIT when I took um, the introduction to urban design course that was taught by Gary Hack. And, and that kind of took me to the large scale urban infrastructure, which was kind of a fuzzy idea in my mind when I was a high school student, but, but um, it became much more real through that class. I also worked as an undergraduate research um, researcher on a project to study the impacts of Proposition Two and a Half on municipalities across Massachusetts. It was a property tax limiting measure that got passed, and I think there was the thought that it was going to have dire impacts on our um, kind of uh, community infrastructure systems. And one of the things I did was drove on every street of many cities. So it wasn't all 370 plus cities, but we had a target set of, of focus municipalities that we were doing deep dive research into. And so, um, so I literally drove every single street in many communities, measuring what the current condition of transportation was. And one of the cities that I did that on is Arlington, which is the city I live in today. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> MIT somewhat like brought your interests in transportation to life, whether that's actually driving through cities or doing projects. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's me. Actually, Carl Kim uh, was my supervisor. He was a PhD student. Oh, so small influential. World. Well, after MIT, you worked on the Central Artery Big Dig project in Boston, one of the most complex infrastructure projects in the U.S. So what did that experience teach you about planning, coordination, and problem solving that still influences your work today? Yeah, I think the the thing I learned um, on the Big Dig project was just that big and small and medium decisions on, on, on any project, no matter the, the scale, are made by a lot of competing interests. And understanding what these interests are, who the advocates are of these interests, and, and then engaging with them, these stakeholders, and having open communication with them is, is really important. It's also um, critical that you have a facilitator who keeps the focus on making the best possible decision uh, you know, go and moving the process forward because you can get stagnated by all these competing interests and, and varying wants. But we need to, you know, anytime there's a project, there's a timeline and you got to keep it going forward. And so just um, understanding how vital that is to ha having success and having moving things forward was something I saw really firsthand on that project. Um, the other part is just that politics is ever present in any public infrastructure project uh, and that a change in leadership can shift priorities overnight, which you know means that it's important to to if you're on a project staying stay nimble and adjust with the changing political environment. So, you know, one of the things that happened when I was working on the Big Dig was we changed from the, the a Democratic governor, um, Dukakis, and Fred Salvucci, who really was the, the visionary for the Big Dig project, to then um, the state-elected uh, Bill Weld, a Republican government governor, and he brought on a very different team. And so we had to adjust. I mean, the project moved forward with the the big vision, but you know, the, the, the changing players met changing priorities and adjusting to um, new people and um, new ways of thinking. And I've seen it over and over again since then, but it was an important lesson learned early on. Got it. Well, I guess this is an instance where your extrovertedness and your EQ will really probably serve you well, being able to understand all the competing interests and whatnot. Yeah, and, and probably it made the work ex more interesting for me because uh -huh. it involved that human understanding. Yeah, well, people always say transportation is half engineering and half human behavior, whether it's you're analyzing the human behavior or you're actually dealing with it in a work setting. Yeah.